Good morning, good afternoon, good evening fellow Waddlers. Today is the 21st of March 2022 and today I thought I'd discuss with you about my recent trip to the hospital. So about two weeks ago I wasn't well. Um, I wasn't well the Sunday night so this was, I'm just trying to think of the date in the top of my head, so 8th, 9th, no, so it was 6th, I think, if I've got that right in my head, so the 6th was the Sunday night, um, I had cramps around about my lower abdomen down to my, um, like, pubic area, shall I say, and I wasn't well. Um, I thought I was just having a normal endometriosis flare up, which I just said to Brett, just get me a hot water bottle, I'll be absolutely fine, I'll sleep this off. Um, I was in a lot of pain that night. Um, hot water bottle seemed to have soothed it, went in the next day um, to work on the Monday, which was the 7th. Um, took the hot water bottle with me, thinking oh, I'll be absolutely fine. Um, I then decided to go cheerleading that night, um, try to do a tryout for East Coast Emeralds, which that's a different story. Um, I came home, well during the, tri during the trial I didn't feel well, I felt like I pulled a muscle on my left hand side of my back. So I sat out and watched them do, um, get ready for their, um, for their competition. So I sat out and watched, um, while sitting down, I was trying to get comfortable and I messaged Brett saying, I'm not feeling great. Something's wrong. I came home. This was about nine o'clock I think I came home I think it was half seven to nine o'clock or half nine I can't remember what time I came home I came home and I said to Brett I'm still not feeling great from this morning and last night I'm just gonna chill out upstairs and see how I go um I tried taking my normal medication which is tramadol which is one of the strongest painkillers that I'm allowed I tried taking that and I also tried taking paracetamol afterwards because I shouldn't be mixing my medication um, with tramadol and morphine which will tell you an interesting story when I was in the hospital what happened with that um, but yeah I took regular paracetamol I then said to Brett this is getting worse um, I need to ring 111 and he said to me if you're gonna ring 111 you know what's gonna happen you're gonna end up going to a and &E and I said, I need to sort out this pain, this is getting worse. Me still thinking this is endometriosis pain, but this was radiating into my lower back, which is where kidneys are, and into my pelvis, uterus area, thinking that I had a water infection at the same time. I was just in absolute agony. So I ring 111. This was about, I want to say about 11, going on 12 o'clock, so almost into the early hours of the morning. I ring them, explain to them what is happening, saying I'm in absolute agony, I can't get comfortable, um, I'm managing to obviously keep fluids down, but don't fancy eating. Um, so they said, with what you're with what your symptoms we'll see if we can get um, a nurse or a doctor to give you a call back and we'll go from there so um, from what they were saying they kept saying oh I think we need to get an ambulance out to you so I was like okay they said this could be up to an hour wait for someone to bring you back for a clinician to bring you back so I was like right, okay so I'm going to be in for a long night it was not until about one two o'clock maybe edging on to half past two um the 
111 rang me back and said, oh, we'll get an ambulance out to you. Um, the then the ambulance crew rang me saying, I can't, we can't get an ambulance out to you. We don't think this is urgent. Um, you can either ring 111 back or it'll be the fact you need to find someone to run you in. At this moment, Brett was trying to get to sleep downstairs because with everything that was going on, we would he would have had the Tuesday off and I would have been at work on the Tuesday. And so he was trying to get comfortable downstairs and I said to myself, right, I'm gonna have to wake him up. So I tried ringing him on his mobile. I tried FaceTiming him on his mobile and Brett had his phone on silent. So I was like, right, I'm gonna have to ring the landline to wake him up. So I rung the landline and I said to Brett, I was like, are you awake? And he goes, just about. I was like, you're going to have to take me up to A&E. And he goes, oh, great. This is going to be a long night. So I was like, yeah. So he took me up to A&E. Um, I registered myself in and I said, I'll keep in contact with him. And I could understand why I couldn't get an ambulance. There was a big queue of ambulances outside of A&E. So I was like, right, OK, I'm so glad I didn't wait for um, an ambulance because I don't know how long it was going to it was going to take. So went through emergency doors, asked me the reason why I came in. I said 111 and um, the ambulance service has advised me to come in. Sat in the waiting room. So registered myself in, sat in the waiting room. Um, the, the team, the nursing team in there were really quick with what was happening with me. So straight away they did blood pressure. Um, your temperature and all, basically all the etc. Like your BP, your blood pressure, your temperature and all that. Um, they didn't do my bloods until I got moved to the ambulatory. I think it was a majors or minors. I'm not too sure which one it was. So I got moved over there to then be seen by a G, like a doctor, like GP sort of practice sort of thing so they didn't want me to go straight into majors because that's where all the people coming in through the ambulances so they were running out of bed so they moved um a few of us across um i then sat down waited and there was me doubling over in pain thinking i really am not enjoying this um so they decided to then take my bloods and asked for a urine dip to rule out any infection. Um, they then called me through and the doctor said to me straight away, you have got signs of water infection. What we can do is, is send you home with antibiotics and see how you go. I point blankly refused the antibiotics because through the time that I got diagnosed with um, endometriosis, before I got end um, diagnosed with endometriosis, all they kept doing was putting me on antibiotics. And I said to um, the doctor straight away, I'm not mean to be rude. Um, I'm not going to go home with antibiotics because I know they're not going to work. And she goes, what do you suggest I do? I was like, I'm not going home on antibiotics. I was in tears. I was in absolute agony. I was like, I'm not putting up with this because I'm just going to end up coming back in. And she goes, well, what I can do is I can get a second opinion. I was like, please. I was like, I'm not taking no as an answer. So she rung through and said about speaking to Gyne, which is funny enough, who I'm under at the moment with my endometriosis. So they spoke to gynecology and the nurse, um, well, the doctor said, I've spoken to the out of hours gynecology um, consultant, or um, I think it's a registrar that works during the night. Um, so the out of hours um, consultant um, registrar, and they said, they advise you, you go to the ward and they will do exam further examinations on the ward. So I was like, perfect. And she, um, she goes, I don't know how long that will be because we have to wait on the bed. And I was like, right, I'm fine. I'm happy with that. So I sat back in the waiting room. This was about half past three in the morning, half past three, four o'clock. So I was like, right, I'm going to let Brett know what's going on. 
and so I explained to him I wasn't taking there as an answer. I decided to then get a coffee because they had the vending machines. So I was like, I need to get some sort of fluids in me. Um, I then, I think it was not until, I don't know what time I got to the ward in the end. I haven't got a clue, but someone came and got me and took me to Clyde Ward. Um, I got put in the waiting room on Clyde Ward till um, I got a bed to find out, what, well, until they moved me into their emergency room, which they do examinations in the emergency room before they move you to a bed. Um, I had the gynae doctor come in, feel my tummy, um, said, oh, I think we need to organise an ultrasound because where my pain was, was fine enough my pelvis area and they wanted to rule out my appendix and all sorts of lower pelvic abdomen pains so they um asked me to go for an ultrasound this was not until the afternoon i think on the um, this was the tuesday so i was like okay that's fine i don't think i had it until the wednesday i'm not too sure i'm not too sure on my days um i then on the tuesday still had the ultrasound in the afternoon and then they were going to send me home because I couldn't find nothing. And I was like, no, you're not sending me home. I was like, there is something seriously wrong. I'm in absolute agony. You're not just going to send me home because you just can't find nothing. You're not just going to par me off. And they said, well, we can get a second opinion. Um, whether they, if you think it might be a gastro related incident. I was like, I don't care. I was like, you're not sending me home in absolute agony. It was the fact I was on morphine because I was in so much pain because they were giving me aura morph. I was like, there is something seriously wrong here. Um, I can't. I was having problems with opening my bowels. I was having retention in my urine because I was struggling to pee whilst I was in the hospital. And it was just, it was going out of the window, all my pain. Just, I just wanted to scream because I was in so much pain. Um, Fast forward to the Friday, which was funny enough, Brett's birthday, bless him. So he did come and see me in hospital and took me out for lunch um, with his mum, which was really nice. So we came and sat downstairs. Um, this is when Garni decided to get um, ring me and say, um, you need to come back to the ward. So during the time I was staying in the hospital, they were doing my bloods each time because they wanted to monitor um, my levels in my blood. So previous to this, my like levels, I don't know which levels they were in my bloods were always risen. I think it was my liver fun function levels were risen and um, the one of the gynae junior doctors rung me when I was having my lunch with Brett saying can you come back to the ward urgently we need to talk to you so Brett whisked me back about this was about half past one in the afternoon so I was like okay so Brett brought me back to the ward um, the junior doctor spoke to me and he goes we're really concerned with your bloods they are really risen I think he said it was my CRP levels and some, it was my infection levels apparently were really risen. And I said, oh, what does this mean? He goes, we need to get a CT to find out what's going on. I was like, okay. Um, bearing in mind beforehand, they really took out my cannula because they weren't using it and it was hurting in my hand. And so the doctor had to put another cannula in and I was like, right. I came out in floods of tears with Brett and he goes, what's going on? And I was like, they don't know what's going on. They think there's something seriously wrong. They think there might be a blockage because I'm not obviously um, opening my bowels. Um, and during this time now, I was also given laxatives. So I was sort of going here and there, but not properly. And they said, right, we need to get CT to find out what's really going on. 
Um, so I had a CT scan later on in that afternoon. I was completely, you know, by mouth because I didn't know what was going on. Um, it was not until I had my CT, I came back to the ward on the Friday. It was not until the Saturday they told me what was going on and that there was a small blockage to my small intestine. Um, that was a big shock because I didn't know what was going on and what had caused it. Um, in conclusion, they were debating whether to go ahead with surgery to remove this blockage, but it was not. They were saying it was not completely blocked. It was like narrowing, if that makes sense. So say this is your small intestine. It was a fact that it was narrowing. It was not completely like blocked off, as they were saying. They were saying it was narrowing to the point that it was almost blocked off. So what they suggested was they were going to try and give me um, some sort of dye so it's laxative and they said if that didn't work I'd have to have a feeding tube and if that didn't work they would then result to surgery and this was all going from my head thinking oh my god what are they going to do so they gave me this sort of dye in a jug called gastro Gaffin or graffin. I'm not too sure how how to pronounce it. So they gave me this. I can't remember if it was a Saturday or the Sunday night. And before that, I vomited. <laughs> so that wasn't great. I think that was the night before I vomited. So like, I I was sitting up right in bed. Uh, this is all. I do apologise for the graphic detail in this. I will honestly put in, put. <laughs> in the on the title for this <laughs> in graphic detail um i didn't feel great i was sitting upright and my nurse said to me but chloe do not retch because that's gonna hurt you and i wasn't retching at all it was then i was like here we go i lay back down tried to get comfy and i was like no no that's not gonna happen so i got back up again and yeah i had to reach for a bowl and all i'm gonna say is that didn't end well. <laughs> that, that didn't end well. Let's just say I ended up in the shower early hours of the morning. That, that wasn't pleasant. And then to think, I think it was the next day or the day after, I then obviously got this dye liquid stuff. And yeah, I'm not going to say the rest. Let's just say next morning i was in the shower again i'm just going to end it there with that graphic detail you can probably guess what happened and i was cramping and it was horrible but it was the fact that they're saying this this was clearing out my system and then there was the i think this was the saturday or the sunday and then the monday morning when the surgeon came around and asked how i was feeling he felt my stomach and he goes how do you feel i was like i feel great gave me food and i was home at half past six on the monday which was brilliant and just the monday morning i just wanted to eat food because the sunday after i had this gastrographin gaffin stuff um, they wanted to try me on like foods first, so they tried me on soup, jelly and ice cream diet. Bearing in mind, I absolutely hate jelly. I don't like the texture, I don't like the taste. Jelly's not for me, unfortunately. So they did give me soup. I think this was the Sunday. They gave me soup um, in the morning. Um... Yeah, soup in the morning. No, they didn't give me anything for breakfast. So they gave me soup. I think I was not allowed anything in the morning. And that lunchtime I was allowed soup. And then at tea time I had soup. So I had, I think it was tomato and basil, I think, for lunch. And then chicken for dinner. And then I just said to myself, I was like, I've, ha I've had enough of this. And um, all I could smell... Um, the Monday morning was toast and all I wanted was toast and I was screaming I just wanted marmalade and toast and I remember the nurse Rochelle her name was 
and I said all I want is toast and she shut my curtain she goes you're gonna have to wait Chloe <laughs> and I was like okay I'll wait until my consultant comes around and I think it was like an hour or two after he then turned around and said yeah I'm more than happy for you to start eating like solid foods just to see how how your um, digestive system works and I was like that's brilliant and I like it uh, Rochelle just laughed at me and she goes you can't have toast now and I was like no that's fine I'm more than happy just to wait and she tried to get me a sandwich but she couldn't and I was like don't worry I, I can wait until lunchtime and I was very very grateful that I was allowed to eat proper food on the Monday and I think he came back around in the afternoon he goes do you want to go home I was like yes please and in conclusion they said my cause of my small blockage to my small intestine was because on some medication I was on for two years so I was on some medication called Teracoxib which was an anti-inflammatory for my back pain so before I got diagnosed with endometriosis they thought it was just muscular, back pain, some sort of... They thought I strained my back basically because of the job I did beforehand which was um, working at the hospital lifting notes day after day sort of thing and I, I was lifting heavy notes so that all they thought was I did something to my back, I like sprained my back. Um, but yeah they thought that was what was my pain and I think I can't remember who put me on the Terracoxib I can't remember if it was the hospital or the pain clinic I'm not too sure but I never came off that medication so I was taking it for two years and yeah and literally a week before I went into hospital on, on the Monday I got prescribed diclofenic because of my migraines because they didn't know um they thought that would be all right and this was the out of hours doctor that prescribed me this and she's an absolutely lovely i think she's a assistant nurse practitioner absolutely lovely um she put me on this we went through my medication thinking oh this is not going to affect any of my medication so i should be absolutely fine and that's what pushed me over the over the edge a week later to be in hospital so i've now been told i'm not allowed any anti-inflammatories so none whatsoever because of it causing damage to my bowel <laughs> so yeah my bowel and my intestines so not allowed any anti-inflammatories in the future um going forward um i've just been told to take a steady um keep an eye on my medications keep an eye on what i eat my diet and um i think um they want my gastro consultant I don't think knows what's been happening so um, he's obviously asked for a follow-up of a stool sample um, for the summer so I don't know if he knows what's going on because he thinks I might have IBD which is irritable, irritable bowel disease which at the moment I do have IBS but he doesn't know if it's progressing to IBD um, but it's the fact if it with what's been happening i wouldn't be surprised if it's not ibd and it was that blockage that was causing all this pain and the blood in my stools and yeah and with the small inflammation maybe who knows so i wouldn't be surprised if it was all linked and hopefully it's now cleared up so touch touch wood i'll touch my bedside table because it's wood but yeah, um, so yeah, hopefully everything is on the mend. I went back to work today after a week off because last week I was off when I came out of hospital. So I've just chilled out and relaxed, taking each day as it comes. Um, so I feel so much better. Oh, I forgot to mention the story about the tramadol and the morphine. So I could have finished it on a lighter note because I still, looking back on it, I do laugh, but when I was in hospital, it was horrible. So I have been told never to take tramadol and morphine together. So when I was in hospital, obviously I took my tramadol in the morning. And bearing in mind, the nurse knew I was taking my tramadol in the morning. 
but my I got always got told to leave it a good hour or so before I take morphine. So I think at one point I took it a few times close together and I can't remember what date it was. I started hallucinating. So I was sort of like laying in bed, obviously I was, I was very relaxed, but all I kept hearing was Brett's voice and it felt like I was at home. And I remember the nurse coming in and I was so dazed and she goes, you're right. I was like, my partner's here. My partner's next to me, isn't he? And she goes, no, Chloe. I was like, I'm at home, aren't I? She goes, no, where, where do you think you are? I was like, I feel like I'm at home. I can hear my partner. I, I can hear the telly. I can hear my partner talking to me. And I was completely out of it. Like, completely out of it. I was so spaced out. I started crying. I messaged Brett saying, I think I'm hallucinating. I feel like you're here with me. I feel like I'm at home. And I wasn't, obviously, I was laying in a hospital bed. And they, I remember that was during the day and at the night time, um, I remember the nurse saying, you're not having any more morphine. I was like, you're not having any more morphine. You're only allowed paracetamol. You're not allowed any more morphine. And yeah, that was really trippy. That was, that was horrible. I've still got bottles of morphine on my, on my shelf because of it being used for emergency cases. I'm not going to touch that after that situation. That was horrible. But I, I look back and laugh at it thinking that was the most weirdest experience I've ever had. I've never hallucinated like that ever. And like, obviously I was put on antibiotics when I was in hospital as well. So, and paracetamol and what um fluids going through my veins so to think that i hallucinated as well at the same time that was that was the tip of the iceberg when i was in hospital because that was horrible and with my mental health at the same time i just that tip yeah as i said that tipped me over the edge but when i look back on it i was just like that is just amazing to think that 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 sort of medication to the strongest medications can actually do that to you which yeah be careful on what medication you're on and don't take tramadol and oromorph together i will let you know that now do not take oromorph and tramadol together or they get advice on how long to leave it if you need to but i, I always got told about like a four hour gap like when you take paracetamol obviously leave it at four hours before you can take another dose and that's what i used to do when i was at home um if i needed or more if i took tramadol i would then give it at least four hours to then take or more and i think in hospital i don't know how many gaps they left until i could have could have this medication but that was mad but touch wood i think i touched my head now touch wood I am not going back in hospital until something drastic happens like Brett's been in hospital my stepdad's been in hospital and we're now debating who's gonna be next out of all of us but touch wood it's not gonna be anyone else and that we're all gonna be fit and healthy for the rest of the year which I like the sound of so I'm gonna round this off and say I am getting there I'm feeling fit and healthy um, I am watching what I eat and I am gonna start put making more bubbly videos because it's been a while since I last uploaded hence why I've not been uploading um, also I do apologize that I've not been uploading plank videos because obviously I've not been well and I will ex extend my plank challenge for another two weeks or more or how many days I've missed out so I will extend it into April to complete the challenge because I think that's only fair but yeah I'm going to round, it, round this off and say I hope you're all all right yourselves and not in the same predicament as me at the moment <laughs> but yeah I will see you guys in the next video Peace out for now.